What's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. I'm really excited for today's video because I had the awesome, amazing opportunity to interview Kate Campbell and Katie Lemieux of the Private Practice Startup. If you haven't heard of them, they're kind of a big deal. So I'm super excited that they were willing to join me in this video and I'm extra excited about what they were willing to talk about. To today's video, they share some of the biggest mistakes that they made when they first started out in private practice, particularly some of their biggest marketing mistakes. And uh, they shared photo evidence of these mistakes. You're not gonna wanna miss this. So I'm looking forward to sharing this interview with you all. Welcome to Private Practice Skills. I'm Dr. Marie Fang, psychologist in private practice. I post videos offering tools I learned the hard way about starting and growing private practice so that you don't have to. If you haven't heard of the private practice startup, it was founded by Kate Campbell and Katie Lemieux, both LMFTs, two therapists with entrepreneurial spirits who are crazy about business, branding, and marketing. They're based in South Florida, but I know they help therapists all over the globe and they have a huge impact in our field. They were both able to build their private practices to six figures after making some of the mistakes that we're gonna talk about in this video. And since they've built their successful practices, they've leveraged their entrepreneurial spirits and their love of teaching to help other therapists not have to make the same mistakes that they did so that people can have the thriving practices that they want and uh, sounds like their interests are right up my alley so I'm so glad to have them on today. Well without further ado let's hop straight into the interview with Kate and Katie of the private practice startup. So welcome Kate and Katie from the private practice startup. I'm so excited to have you both Hi. here. This is very exciting. I think a long time in the in the making. Um, for folks who haven't met the two of you yet and aren't familiar with private practice startup, I wonder if you'd be willing to kind of introduce yourselves and give a little snippet of what the private practice startup is all about. The long and short of it is um, we're two therapists, licensed marriage and family therapists here in sunny South Florida with entrepreneurial spirits. Um, we both have created our six figure private practices from the ground up. So many therapists would ask us like, how did you do it? Like, can you coach me? And so we started doing some coaching and then we really wanted to reach a wider audience and make a greater impact. So we started our podcast five years ago, um, spreading across the globe um, in many different countries as well as the US obviously. So we really overall help therapists brand themselves and build and grow their dream practice. These guys have really done every single <laughs> thing. Like they covered all the bases. So it's so wonderful um, that you're willing to share some of your knowledge with us today. Of course. Uh -huh. And we're just excited to be here. I know um, we've been collaborating and communicating behind the scenes for a while now, talking about getting together and doing some official collabs. So we're, we're ready to go. Yeah. We're excited to talk about marketing mistakes. Just in case folks don't know, Kate and Katie are marketing experts when it comes to private practice, but, um, even, even you both have made mistakes. The two of you have agreed to share some of your marketing mistakes from your early days, which, um, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of, there's something just so validating about knowing that you're not the only one I'm talking about myself. <laughs> so I made so many yeah. mistakes and I'm sure folks will find that helpful. So I wonder if, um, you'd be willing to share, like, what were some of the biggest mistakes that, um, you made in, in the early days when you got started in private practice? Oh, there's I'm so many. Katie, do you want to go first or do you want me yeah, to go Yeah, I almost feel like this could be like a tell-all. Like, <laughs> like I'm just thinking about, I'm like, oh, let me share one of the worst things that I did. Like, so I was, I started private practice over, over a decade ago. Um, and I remember I would literally get people's information and put it on my email list. Like no opt-in, no asking, because I was like desperate for people. And of course it was like anybody who I'd meet networking. Right. And, um, so that was definitely one of the things that, and I know Kate and I talk a lot about this. It was like the running around doing all of the things. And it's like, you're just spending money and wasting money. And it just, you know, there was no, at that time I had no ideal client. I was working with children and teens and substance abuse and trauma and like all over the map, like running around exhausted my first business card was off of Vistaprint. And of course, everyone that I met at networking had the same one. I'll tell you what it is. So you guys might be like, I have that one too. <laughs> it was like this. And first off, I hate the color orange. Orange is not my color, but it was like this orangey card, like a sunset and a family. And so many people had the same card. It was awful. And then 
I created my first brochure that of course at the time I was very proud of on publisher. And I'm like, okay, well I'll take the orange from the card and match it in the brochure. But it was like a public announcement all about Katie. Like, cause I didn't know like, oh, you're, A, you're supposed to have an ideal client because clearly I didn't. And it was like trying to sell my like worth and value through my accolades and credentials and Oh my God, such a turnoff, you know, as, as I look back because no one cares about that. There's like two pictures of me on the brochure. It was, uh, as, as Kate has talked about her own business card, we call it a hot mess express. So marketing was a hot mess express back in the day for me, for sure. I love that. And thank you for sharing that. You're calling it the hot mess express. And at the same time, I know that th those are the same mistakes I've made and I'm willing to venture to guess like 90 percent plus therapists do all the same things and so and I hear that as both like looking back you're thinking oh no that was not good and also um you worked so hard at it at the time that was you putting your best foot forward so I think that's really important to to hear that too and realize oh no <laughs> my best was uh, a hot mess express without realizing it <laughs> wow. until you have high hindsight right and you look back and you're like whoa what is this yeah <laughs> i heard some like little tidbits of tips of what you know instead of what not to do what to do and we'll, i think we'll get to that in a little bit but i did hear like you were just doing everything everything you possibly could putting money into everything and none of it was really quite right either at the same time we've Here's all probably made all of the mistakes over over the years and when katie and i first started out there weren't any practice building resources there was casey Truffaut's program and that was it. There was no other practice building resources. So we were forced to learn a lot of the things the hard way. I can remember uh, I graduated with my master's. I became a registered intern. I immediately started renting office space from someone. And it was a large office space. I went and bought all of this nice furniture and my business cards. I'm like, okay, I have the beautifully designed office and I've got my business, my business cards. I know I need to network and I know I need a website. And I just, at the time, I was so naive about entrepreneurship. And it's funny because I came from a family of entrepreneurs. You'd think that I would be having, you know, the, the understanding of what goes into building a solid foundation for your business, creating a brand and, you know, a marketing strategy and your ideal clients and all of that stuff. I knew none of it, but I had this belief in myself that I would just figure it out. And I did, but I, I made so many mistakes along the way. I can remember when I was first um, creating my business card and I, it was the hot mess express, you guys. It, it actually had a hot mail address, email address on it. That's it why like, it's hot mess Mitchell <laughs> at hotmail.com. It's like, what? Anytime anybody has an at Gmail or at AOL or at hotmail address, it's yeah, no, you got to have your, your, your actual business URL in your email. So it looks professional and credible and all of that. And um, at the time, my mom was saying, oh, you need to have a logo design. I know a, a designer, she'll take care of you. She'll design a beautiful logo for your business. I had no clue about who my ideal clients were at that time. I was operating from uh, scarcity mindset and imposter syndrome and all of those mindset issues at the time. So I was like, I'll work with the masses. And I created this name for my company called Life's Connections which is so vague, so broad, what the heck does it even mean? I dissolved it quickly after because I realized, okay, that was not gonna work. Um, and she connected me with this graphic designer and I was thinking they were gonna work with me on this logo design. It kind of looked like an abstract K or a person dancing or I don't even know. And then they, they sent the bill my way for 500 bucks and I was like, what? So that was making my head spin. And that's no shade towards graphic designers, because if you get an amazing logo and you have the brand clarity and, you know, you have done that work on the foundation of your business first, more power to you. That's an amazing thing to do. However, if you haven't done any of that work and you don't know what you're doing, don't spend $500 on a logo because you're likely going to want to change it. Um, so I had no clear brand at the time and I was also working with the masses. I think I slid my fee. Um, I think I started off saying I was charging $80 an hour. 
picked the number out of the sky and then I slid my fee to someone for 40 bucks an hour. And you know, it, I, I just didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. So Kate and I, our story goes back to like before 2006, we met actually in licensure supervision <clears throat> and then we didn't want to give up our supervisor. Oh, so we did oh, supervision. Oh, oh. Do you know what I'm going to say? I know what it is. And I wanted to say this because I was thinking of it earlier. And I'm hopefully we're, we're of the same brain. We usually are. Usually are. So <laughs> I had this website that was built on Dreamweaver, which was like way old school for people who are techie and no websites. Yeah, that was like from way back in the day. And it was such a basic website. And it was all about me and not about my ideal clients. But guess what I was doing for my images? I was going to Google and like, Oh, that's a nice image. Oh, that's a pretty image. Oh, that looks like a happy family. Let me put that on my website. I don't even work with families. And so I'm just putting all these pictures on my website. Katie's like, oh, cool website. Where'd you get your pictures? I downloaded them off Google. No Great. clue. <laughs> no clue that I couldn't do that what? until I got sued for using Getty Images. No. Um, for using their photos without having the right so i that was a lesson i learned the hard way and yes yeah, so that don't make that mis, uh, mistake people don't make that mistake we were like the blind leading the blind back then i guess we were <laughs> way back in the day yeah it seems like a good idea like <laughs> but it's, it's it's really not that must have been such a huge nightmare and, and really does feel like well if you don't have a resource to tell you then yeah that's what you're gonna do and then you Pay yeah, for it later. You literally. don't know what you don't know. And luckily nowadays, there's so many great resources that can really help you have that clarity. Yes. So please tell us some of your mistakes because I'm sure you made some of those and some different ones too, Marie. <laughs> oh, I love talking about the mistakes. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten sued yet. <laughs> so I, I can't say I checked all the boxes that you just checked, but pretty, pretty close. Uh, the like helping the masses like no specialty sliding scale been there done that uh you know beggars can't be choosers scarcity mindset all of that um and which of course didn't work and i have a brochure as well i'm not sure if i th i don't know if i like deleted it forever when i found it more recently and thought oh this is so terrible i can't even look at it again uh but i definitely had the brochure that i spent ages and ages putting together with my pictures on it and it's talking about my credentials and all my trainings and i was so proud of it and i'm sure i got zero clients from my brochure that i posted all over um, my city <laughs> like coffee shops with my business card yes also during i started private practice more recently than the two of you and so i had access to resources that i just didn't know ex the, the resources were there and i didn't know um, I just didn't think, let me find who else is teaching on this. It's like, I got this. This should work. <laughs> just put the nice furniture in the office and people will show up somehow magically. Uh, yeah, so I definitely made those mistakes. I sent out snail mail flyers in like 2012, <laughs> uh, you know. Hey, I'm here. And that's an expensive yeah. one too. If you need a therapist, come see me. And I think that's probably like the the root of my mistakes is um, like not knowing what I was about and mm -hmm. um, just putting a lot of effort into stuff, and that helped me feel like I was building a business. But the efforts I was doing were pretty fruitless. That's like the smallest nutshell of some of my mistakes. But if I can find any of those images, I'm going to pull them up and I'll share them here as well. Yeah. So one of, one of the things that's funny, and I think you actually have this, so you'll be able to flash it up, is Kate and I laugh a lot at our professional photos of when we first started oh. private practice. So yes. uh, Kate, Kate and I must have been sharing the same brain even before we did, because clearly we both got the same message of what a professional therapist looks like and clearly we thought that was like an attorney or a realtor um, because the reality is, is we both wore white you know white collared button downs with these black jackets and you know i'm standing there like <laughs> and kate's kind of like propped up and it's so funny and we joke around and we'll put the picture side by side and we'll say but like, law offices campbell and lemieux um but it's like that is not what someone wants to come to as a therapist. Like, I, I don't think I've even, it's funny because Kate and I, you know, we teach a lot on marketing. And so we'll talk about, we call them the fads and the flops. And we'll look for random stuff online and be like, that's a flop. But never do I see anyone in a white button down with a black jacket. Like we own that flop like 100%. <laughs> 
yeah, that's <clears> another big one too. And that was even how I was showing up to, to see clients because I was so young. I had, I went straight, straight from college to graduate school into private practice as a registered intern under supervision and with a licensed clinician on site uh, here in the state of Florida, we're able to do that. But I was so, I had this imposter syndrome and I was like, they're going to think I look like a, a baby. And what do I know about relationships? Or I don't have kids. How can I work with people who have kids? So I'm like, I'm going to dress up in a suit every day. So I would wear like a skirt suit and I would try and look like super professional when I was just coming across probably like really stuffy and inauthentic at the time. And it's not even how I would dress. I'm so glad you said that too, the age factor. Um, I so relate. I was 25 when I started mm -hmm. and I wow. did the exact same. Not, I didn't wear a suit, but I had I stuffy clothes that I didn't feel like me in and high heels and all the stuff. And I felt like I had to, I, it was very intentional. Like I'm doing this because I'm too young. <laughs> I need to fool <laughs> people a little bit that maybe I could pass as 30, <laughs> even though I'm not. <laughs> uh, Totally. So you went all in that it wasn't just your business card didn't reflect you, but your whole like persona in private mm -hmm. practice didn't, as a therapist didn't quite it yeah. wasn't authentic in that sense. You know, now that we've made all these mistakes, like, would you be willing to share, like, if there could just be maybe one takeaway, I know you have so many wonderful resources, but if there's kind of like one tip for folks who maybe are wanting to start in private practice, like if, if folks could have something to focus on so that they don't get lost in all of these potential mistakes, like what would you suggest people focus on when they're first starting out? So I think one of the things is, you know, coming, coming from being a therapist and going to school and trainings and going through our licensure process is, you know, we learn how to be great clinicians, but business is a whole different realm. And we really have to grow into being a business owner and entrepreneur. And that's a ton of different skill sets. And so, you know, Kate and I really like to take people on a journey from the inside out, right? And we really believe, and for me, a brand is your personal essence and your professional essence coming together, right? Because when we're living authentically, overall, but we're living authentically in our work, like that's our best selves coming forward. And that's just going to naturally attract um, those as well. So that's kind of like, to me, that's like the first step of it all. Oh, I love that. The first big step, but big, big major step. payoff. Yeah. When you set up your, your business with that solid foundation and you have that clear brand and clear ideal clients, it makes everything else so much easier from then on. It just streamlines all business decisions, who you collaborate with, who you hire, who you bring on to work with you, who you don't bring on to work with you, who you, who you serve, who you don't serve. It just really makes all of the rest of the decisions in business so much easier. It could feel daunting, I think, for some folks to think, well, I don't know where to start with that. But I know mm -hmm. you have so many tools available. As you mentioned, there, there's you have so many free resources available. And I know you also have some more um, tailored offerings to help people on, on this path if they could use a little bit of help because they're saying, okay, I could imagine people saying, Kate and Katie, that sounds great, but how do I do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I wonder it, what kind of offerings you might have available if people are looking for a little more help with that. We've got our free podcast. And that comes out every week. So definitely check out our podcast. There's a lot of free content in there. We also have our Facebook group and we share tons of resources. It's the private practice startup. You'll find lots of support in there um, from therapists all over the globe who are in private practice at different points al along the journey. And then we also have some additional resources on the website. So our marketing playbook, which is your dream private practice playbook, is our exact methodology in regards to how we built our six-figure private practices and help many therapists do the same. So that's on our website as well, privatepracticestartup.com. It's right on the homepage, but it's also under the resources tab as well. And that is that is our greatest like gift and contribution, I think, to the therapy world. We just love being able to help clinicians to have that ideal practice that helps them have the life that they really want to live and to be their own bosses and create their own schedules and to be making a really great income while making a really great impact. It's just amazing. And of course, I'll link to all of those things um, in the description box below. So folks can check those out if that's something that people are interested in. Well, thank you. Yeah, so well, thank you. you to you both. I'm so grateful that you were willing to take the time and share your, 
your wonderful resources with everyone. Um, it's so helpful and, and also just so validating, even just for myself to hear like, oh, I'm not the only one who makes these mistakes. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having us on and for all the work that you do supporting clinicians and private practice <laughs> as well. I mean, it's, yeah, I feel, we feel the, the same way about you. Thank you. Yes, it is. It's such a joy. Wow. What an amazing interview. I don't know about you, but for me, I really love when people are willing to so vulnerably share their mistakes and even show photo evidence of it. It just helps me feel validated because I know I make lots of mistakes and knowing that other people make mistakes too really helps me feel like I'm not failing. I'm just following in the footsteps of everyone else who's set out before me. But hopefully as a result of having heard some of their mistakes, you can also avoid some of them and know that you can do it. If you make mistakes along the way, you can still get to where they are. So that's really awesome feedback. Now, Kate and Katie offer so many different valuable resources. I've linked to all of them in the description box. I've also linked to their private practice marketing e-course and their customizable attorney approved private practice paperwork for therapists. So many awesome goodies that they offer. And before we close, I'd like to thank therapynotes.com for sponsoring this video. Therapy Notes helps with all of your practice management needs from scheduling to notes to billing, and they offer a free telehealth platform included for all members. If you'd like to check out Therapy Notes, you can get two months to try it for free with no commitment just by clicking the link in the description of this video. Well, thanks so much again to Kate and Katie from the Private Practice Startup for being so willing to share some of their biggest marketing mistakes when they first started out in private practice. Let me know in the comments what some of your biggest mistakes were when you were first starting out or, you know, maybe recently, it's totally okay, no judgment, so that other folks can, you know, avoid your mistakes too and maybe feel validated as well. And until next time, from one therapist to another, I wish you well. Can I hear you now? I can hear you. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? I can. Let me put on Do Not Disturb. All of a sudden, a phone call came in and I was like, oh, and I tried to inch my hand up so it didn't look like I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, I slid it over and I was like, okay, good. And then I'm like, I don't hear them. And I'm like, okay, mute and smile. And no, I hit unmute and I can't hear them. <laughs>